Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Houseplant Pixie. For everyone that's new to my channel, my name is Monique, and welcome back to my existing subscribers. Thanks so much for tuning back in to my channel. And today's episode is about my Epipremnum and Plissimum. I've had it for quite some time, a couple of years. plant if you could watch this video all the way to the end comment like and share that would be amazing and it just helps me out heaps with the algorithm okay I'll show you the plant I can't even remember how many leaves it had when I first got it and I don't think the leaves the vi like some plants just don't look as good on video as they look like live so i had i had it in my plant room near the window it's a north facing window and then i was reading of or seeing that if you put them on a pole so it's never been on a pole it was just leaning against against the couch and sort of never touched itself but it loved the spot and I changed it I changed it to a different spot and I gave it a pole and it didn't like it so it developed this massive uh, and it keeps going and going <laughs> And going and we're going to cut this now and yeah so I'm giving a few cuttings away to some friends they want to try and prop it someone just told me today it's actually not easy to propagate this plant but then some people say monster and Peru are not easy to propagate and I didn't have any problems yeah, I was just, I'm just hoping, I'm going to put it exactly in the same spot where I had it before. It's definitely not root bound. I'll check the snow roots coming out the bottom. The soil is not pulling away from the pot. And I actually physically pulled it out and had a look. That pot is fine. It's not root bound. So the problem was the change of lighting. And... I'm just going to make this short and sweet. I'm going to draw um, prop one or two leaves. Uh, I'll just take it off here for now. Here's this runner. So I got that one leaf there. I'll just put that on the floor. And now I'm going to have a look at the plant. And because it's still on a slight lane, I'll, I just think I'll chop this one off as well. And then we give it a pole. Make sure that your secretaries are nice and clean. And I also like to cut on an angle and the angle is going to be away from the leaf axle because if you cut that way it's more for outside it's not so much for your indoor plants because you don't have the rain but it's a good habit to get into I believe because if you prune your fruit tree or you prune other trees or you prune your roses and you will cut on an angle and the rain water comes on first of all if you have that cut straight the water could sit on it which could cause rot and if you cut the angle towards the leaf axle the water could sit in this leaf axle and you don't want that either all right i've got a lovely moss pole here
I didn't actually put it on the proper moss pole. Maybe that had something to do with it. I'm not too sure. So for tying it to the pole, I use this Jolly tree tie. It's really soft material. I absolutely love it. I'm not a fan of this Velcro. Um, I always believe if that Velcro, if someone put that on my wrist and then, I don't know, I just don't like the feel and <laughs> I feel what my plants feel. <laughs> That's what I go by. So if I don't like the lighting, I don't put my plants there. Simple. Right. I... Start at the bottom here and then I'm gonna cross it at the back and just come around the front again but a bit higher and see if I have enough to go around twice and back and then I just tie a knot with a ribbon in case I want to take it off or loosen it just makes it a lot easier that looks heaps better so with the care I think they really love the humidity it sits in my plant room and looking at it, oh, yoy, it has heaps of <laughs> bit of dust on the leaves. We're going to clean the leaves. When you do clean the leaves, take a damp cloth with a bit of detergent, a little bit of neem oil and just wipe them down. Also with the potting mix, I use my potting mix. I mix myself, which is made of premium potting mix, horticulture charcoal, perlite and orchard bark and the temperature. The temperature is pretty consistent in my home. It's always around 18, 20 degrees and I'm going to put it exactly in the same spot where it was happy. I know this looks a bit funny and the pot's not big enough but this pot is actually like a really heavy and I don't have many of them. I use the plastic pots. This, when you have lots of plants on a shelf, your loading capacity, you gotta be aware of it. So yeah, that pot doesn't really look the prettiest, but it was tipping over in a plastic pot. Now, let's just pop that here. The runner. Same with all the other propagations. You always have the leaf. If you don't have the leaf, perfect example here, there's a node here. There's a node here. It's that it's almost like a like a lump. You can definitely feel it if you go along with your fingers, node, node. So what we're going to do is we so I could cut the note is where my fingers are, but this is that's too long for my liking, so I'm gonna shorten that. And then I show you where we put it for propagation. I'm absolutely new at this. I've never propagated in Epipremnum Amplissimum. I'm a little bit nervous. Wish me luck. Um, yeah, what can I say? <laughs> you gotta try it and if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Then we learn from it. So with the tip cutting, there's another note here. I usually leave the tip cutting as it is, but we take that long bit off. And that's all I'm going to do. Like, 
I shorten. Here's the note and I'm just gonna shorten all the bits. Now I'm just gonna give the blades a bit of a wipe. You'll be surprised how quick they actually do collect dust. So I use a microfiber cloth and I just soaked it with the, um, I made up like a little Oh, dirty. Can't really see. Um, yeah, as I said before, bit of detergent. You can just use detergent. That's fine. I like to put a dash of neem oil in as well because if there's any pests on it, it'll be the end of them too. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen. I don't have, I, I haven't seen this plant around much. I'm writing on the back the today's date and what it is, because otherwise, how would you know? So I decided to go for perlite. I'm going to try these Ziploc bags. I put them on the plate simply because if it does leak, it will leak on the plate and not on my heat pad. I'll just wiggle them into the perlite and as I said I haven't tried it. I will leave that plastic bag open. I think it will create enough humidity having it open. If it doesn't I will maybe close it up a little bit but make sure that there's air getting to them so they won't rot. The leaf cuttings I will place in a glass in perlite and that's it. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay plenty. Bye.